Have you ever noticed how we humans love swinging stuff about? From weapons? To sports clubs? To everyday tools? But perhaps the most simple and multifunctional of these is a long, straight, sturdy stick. A tool I've done many past videos about, from its everyday survival uses to my favourite stick fighting arts from around the world and ages. In this video, I seek to answer one simple yet surprisingly complex question. How can you swing a stick perfectly? With the help of some sword fighting instructors and modern science, we compete who can swing the fastest and challenge ourselves by coming up with three universal principles in the form of a symbol that can not only be applied to swinging almost any tool, but also used as a daily movement meditation to practice speed, control, balance and flow. So, stay tuned. Hi folks, Tom from Van Dive Dozy. Thanks for tuning in. So if you're new to the channel, I like to make videos about a bunch of different topics, but mainly wilderness survival skills and martial arts, often from a historical perspective. And what I love about these two topics is they force you to simplify life to its absolute basics, giving you strong foundations from which you can build everything else in life from. Now, I want to be clear that I don't consider myself an expert in martial arts. I'm just a weirdo who spends too much time in the woods swinging a stick about philosophizing about things. So this is why I'm grateful from the folks at Source of Swords and Heiko from the Katrin Society for providing their expertise in historical martial arts. Now I also enjoy including a bit of philosophy in my videos and this is why I'm a big fan of many Eastern martial arts as they often incorporate a greater life philosophy to their martial training. Basically using their physical training and mindset as metaphors to live your life by and to approach every given moment. Now this greater philosophy can loosely be translated as the way, often seen as Do in Japanese, such as Aikido, Jodo, Kendo, Judo. So for me, wilderness survival skills trains you in the basic necessities of life, whereas martial arts trains you in the mechanics and the philosophy, the way to live them by. And one tool that fits beautifully in these two worlds of wilderness survival and martial arts is a good stick. And I've got a whole series of videos discussing this simple tool, which I recommend checking out after this video. Now you might be asking, how is it even possible to swing a stick perfectly? Perfectly for what? Well, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be focusing on martial arts, but I hope to provide some basic principles that can be applied to not only any weapons-based fighting styles, but also everyday hand tools. Now, if you're interested in any of the topics I cover in this video, then go check out my playlists. I've got one on survival trips, Highlander survival, martial arts, archery, philosophy, and much more. If that isn't enough, then go to my Patreon page, donate whatever you can afford, and there you can find extra learning resources as well as monthly behind the scenes videos. If that still doesn't tickle your learning taste buds, then click that link below and try a free trial with Wandrium. There you'll find a bunch of related in-depth online courses. And honestly folks, if it wasn't for the support of my patrons and sponsors like Wandrium, I simply couldn't afford to spend as much time making these videos. So the support is greatly appreciated. If you're like me and are relentlessly curious about everything, then Wandrium is like the biggest online candy shop of well-researched knowledge on the internet. Wandrium is the rebrand of The Great Courses Plus, and it's basically the Netflix of learning, but now with even more courses to choose from. On one subscription, you get access to thousands of courses on pretty much any subject you can think of, from science, music, history, philosophy, relationship advice, building a business, you name it, they've got it. There's no homework or tests, you just learn whatever you want, whenever you want. Subjects are given by experts in their field from Ivy League universities or organisations like National Geographic and content is updated monthly. Favourite thing about it is you can download the audio of the lectures onto your phone so you can listen to it whenever you want. I also like the university style of lectures as it gives you a great academic background, a non-biased viewpoint and context for every subject. A Wandrium subscription also makes a great gift for a loved one who shares a thirst for knowledge. Did you know light can act like a particle or a wave depending on whether it's being observed or not? 
I learned this mind-blowing fact, as well as many others on the course, the evidence for modern physics. How we know what we know. Another related course I enjoyed is titled Understanding and Applying Self-Defense Strategies, as well as Real Zen for Real Life. You can try it out for free by going to wandrium.com forward slash fandabidozy or click the link in the description below. How to swing a stick perfectly. How to swing a stick perfectly. Quite quickly after deciding on this video topic, I realized that this is actually quite a complex question as depending on what type of stick or weapon you're using or what martial master you might ask from around the world and ages, everyone's gonna have a differing opinion on the specifics of form and technique. Furthermore, when using an edged weapon, such as a sword, you need to keep in mind things such as edge alignment, point of percussion, and keeping behind the guard. All stuff which isn't really applicable to a staff or other hand tools. So just keep this in mind as I really simplify things for the sake of this video. So, in order to help me answer this ultimate question on how to swing a stick perfectly, I'm joined by Ben and Victoria from Source of Swords. These guys own a sword fighting school in Glasgow, mainly focusing on Scottish broadsword, but they both have lots of experience in many other weapons-based martial arts. Victoria also has experience in sports conditioning, so these guys are perfect to help teach a newbie like me how to swing a stick perfectly. My challenge for us today is to try to simplify this question into three universal principles that can be applied to many other weapons as well as sports and everyday hand tools. So, you guys up for the challenge? Let's do it. Absolutely. We're going to try to think of three things. It's going to be difficult. So, we'll refer to some different weapons and stick types as we go, but just to keep it consistent, we'll mainly be using this rattan staff, which is five feet long, but an inch and a quarter wide. And we'll also be using a radar speed gun to help us out. So let's start with my definition on how to swing a stick perfectly. From a martial perspective, the aim of swinging a stick is to generate as much velocity with as much mass behind it as possible at point of contact, while still remaining in control of the weapon in order to move swiftly into another attack or guard. So you could summarize this and say swinging a stick perfectly is the balance of three things, mass, velocity, and control. So what I thought we would do is that we would look at these three things individually, first with some really simple science, and then hopefully these guys can help me out looking at the art of each one of them. So let's start with the basic science of momentum and mass. Simply put, we want to create momentum, and momentum is the product of mass times velocity. Mass is basically volume times density. Every stick is gonna have a different mass and a heavy hard stick is gonna hit with more momentum going at the same speed compared to a lighter soft stick. But it's not all about the stick. We can also put our body behind the swing to increase mass by using good body mechanics, posture and hand positioning at point of impact. More on this later. Speaking of mass, there's one very important thing to mention, which is center of mass. It could be described as the balancing point of any tool. Your body also has a center of mass, typically around the pelvic area. And this is an essential point to be aware of in many martial arts in order to keep balance and control. And you could say that swinging a stick perfectly is to understand the relationship between your own center of mass and that of the tools. The balance point for staffs is usually in the middle, often near the hilt for most swords, and it's near the blade head for axes. There's some basic science about mass. So Ben and Victoria, how can we use our body mechanics to impart as much of our body's mass to the stick? Hmm. A way that you can think about using mass practically is to think about straight lines. In a lot of European martial arts, what we have is an extension or a lunge. Utilizing this extension, without doing anything else, we can put our mass through our opponent. So for our lunge, first of all, we're gonna want a good connection to the ground. So separate the feet, round yourself. We're gonna be back over our back leg. So the weight is right over that back leg and it's chambered and ready to spring out. 
Our top half is going to be lovely and engaged. We want this nice solid structure so we can drive the center of mass forwards. And after that, since we're already prepped, we're just going to push off the back leg and really use the legs to drive forwards. So when we then add the staff, the difference is that when we make contact with the staff on our lunge, we're making another triangle here. Using this projection of mass and by placing our staff centre of mass on our opponent's weapon, we can often strike in a way that blows through someone's guard. So, body mechanics of imparting mass, trying to think of a universal principle. Some of the words we use, we talked about grounding, okay, we talked about centering a mass, and I noticed we talked about triangles quite a lot, right? In terms of like our, our body mechanics, and the triangle is the, the strongest shape, yeah. right? In all of uh, you know, architecture and stuff, it's always in triangles. So, could you say, or the first universal principle, ground, center, and triangles? That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Grounding your feet, creating body engagement, centering yourself, and um, structure, gravity. which is usually triangles. Yeah, yeah, triangles. Let's look at the second important thing to create momentum, which is velocity. For this, we need to look at rotation and leverage. If you move the back of the stick at the same time as the front, you aren't making much speed. It is in a quick rotation around an axis that you create speed at the tip of the stick. With this basic law of leverage, we know that the further away the point is along the stick from the point of rotation, the faster it is travelling. This is why you can throw a projectile faster using a sling, as it increases the length of the arc, imparting more speed to the throw. In the same way, the tip of the stick will move slower if rotated close to the middle, compared to if rotated at the far end. As well as move slower if swung with bent arms, compared to arms outstretched. 44. We can create rotation in many parts of the body, from the footwork, our hips, our shoulders, elbows, wrists, and even our fingers play a role. And you could say to create maximum power is to combine all of these areas of rotation. So now onto the art of velocity. Now, really the fastest way to swing a stick would be something like a baseball swing, okay? But a major difference with martial arts is that we're always trying to think about guarding ourselves, keeping ourselves safe. So this is why a baseball swing might not quite work with martial arts. When we're talking about using the entire body as part of this rotation, we need to figure out a way of connecting the bottom part to the top part and the stick. One of the ways that we can do that is actually by letting this middle section flow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it up into three sections. The first is the hip, then we have the ribs, and then we have the shoulders. And this section here is going to be moving in the center. Now what we're trying to do is take advantage of something that's really naturally happening in the body which is called the stretch reflex. Very simply summed up, the stretch reflex is when the body is stretched out and it thinks it might be in a bit of danger, it snaps itself back and that is faster than anything we do consciously. So we want to take advantage of that when we swing. The preparation then has the hips moving first, then the rib and then the shoulders follow in and you flow through this motion. Just like throwing a ball, like throwing a javelin, and it's just like swinging a stick. In a lot of staff martial arts, you're continually charging the stick with kinetic energy by drawing circles. What you might notice is that I'm very relaxed. My hands are sometimes barely even holding on to the stick. This saves energy, but there's still enough velocity in the stick that any point I can cut or I can guard. Often, we relax as we prepare before fully tightening everything as we strike. Okay, the man with the theory is back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Victoria, you talked about um, the stretch reflex, the kinetic chain. You, you use the word throw. I quite like that, the word throw, that seems to sum up quite a lot. 
And Ben, you talked about circles. So would you agree a good universal principle to sum up this velocity would be something like throw out in circles? Yeah. yeah. Right. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. Throwing, we get the kinetic yeah. chain. Yeah, getting the rotations. Rotations, we're throwing out, so we're making the most out of leverage, using mm -hmm. the most of the extension of the arms, extension of the stick, and it's all about the circles, right? Throwing out a circle. Yeah, no, I think you got something. So if we agree that understanding the center of mass and how to rotate your stick is important for creating maximum momentum, then there's one final concept that ties these together showing us not only how to create momentum, but also how to maintain control. This concept in physics is called the moment of inertia and is basically the rotational equivalent of mass. It measures how hard it is to rotate a stick and is determined by how the mass is distributed throughout its length and the axis about which the stick is rotated. Simply put, if you rotate a stick weapon or tool at a point far away from its centre of mass, it will take more effort and be harder to control, but it will create a lot of momentum since most of the mass of the stick is in the swing. Compared to if you rotate it close or on its balancing point, it will be easier to create speed and to control it. But you'll sacrifice some momentum as there is less of the stick's mass and length in the swing. Okay, so there's a wee bit of the science of control. So guys, what is the art of controlling a stick? What do you guys think? If we're trying to talk about it nice and concise, think about generating body structures, which mm. are a bit like those triangles. The triangles, yeah. Um, and these body structures both generate and manage momentum, which okay. is, ends up being those circles. The circles. I like that word manage. You're basically um, making sure that you've got those right, that right body structure, the mm. right triangles mm -hmm. uh, in proportion to how much force and mm. the size of the circles. Mm -hmm. So you could say that control is basically the interplay of the two things we've been talking about. Okay, keeping within these triangles and these circles. There's a great quote from a 18th century sword fighting instructor called Thomas Page, which he described as equilibrio. So you could say is balance. And he said something like to be in equilibrio is to have your center of mass within your center of magnitude. And I, I interpret center of magnitude as basically the distribution of mass, the distribution of the mass of the stick, the, the force, the, the, the mass, the rotational mass, yeah. and your body mass. So equilibrio, balance, it's quite a nice word, equilibrio. And that, that to me sums up the, that perfect interplay between, mm -hmm. between the, the right structure and the right circles. So I guess it's hard to explain and you could you could talk about it in endless different circumstances. Let's just keep it simple. Let's say uh, we're gonna try, have a little competition with the speed reader and see who can do the fastest cut, i.e. the most velocity, with the most mass, so the mm. best body structure, but still be in control to come up to a guard. Okay, I think a nice easy one would be a simple descending strike from the French great stick system. That will be a preparation, a descending strike and then return to a guard. Okay, sound good? Cool. Right, we're going to see how fast you can do it. I mean, Victoria will judge you. <laughs> 79. 79? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Step. Yeah. 64. 64. Oh, so these guys are the, the sword fight instructors. <laughs> trying to get a good preparatory position that chambers my chambers me up and I'm trying to arrest all of the force back into my guard. 78. 58. 59. <laughs> relax. Relax. As, as, relax just after the point hits. Oh yeah. Too tight. Tight like a tiger. All of the moments where you're not hitting, try and get as relaxed as possible. Yeah. 69. 73. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that Ben is doing the fastest swing out of all three of us. So Ben, a little personal challenge. See how fast you can swing it using whatever cuts the guards, but you're still trying to keep in control. And still thinking about keeping your body's mass behind it. 
Okay, I yeah. think I've got a few cuts to try. Okay. So, this chambering is a lot of the things you see in there. Yeah. So you try to get rotation for the whole body. Whoa, 91! <laughs> <laughs> This is used a lot of very heavy weapons. Yeah, so it's good to see the weapons. So you said that you see this uh, mirror, which is uh, German yeah. water staff. Cool. Yeah, and Absolutely. I'm I'm naturally a broadsworder, so my instinctual react, my instinctual actions are one-handed. Yeah. So I want to see what it's like to move a stick one-handed. I do that with any kind of control. Yeah. Ninety-seven. <laughs> wow. Um, Four. Maybe. Where's their control? I don't know. Seventy-four. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Eight. Okay, that was a fun wee exercise. Have you guys ever ever measured the, the speed of your swing? You know no. what? Never. I like that. That was yeah. that was a little bit of indication. It's quite interesting. Now obviously all that is measuring is the velocity. Mm -hmm. it, we, it's really hard to measure the mass. I was trying to look at you can buy things that measure the power of a boxer's punch, uh, like measuring force, but it's quite it's quite mm. difficult to calculate. So I figured this was at least something to play with. Mm. Um, so from that we exercise, was there any takeaway points? The ones where I got the most success was I was on a nice lunge. I got and I got a chance to fully extend the staff, so create get, those triangles, and you get the most of leverage. You get the length, yeah, you're right, that, that full length. But I was also about relaxing right when the force of the staff started to overtake me. So none of that force went into my body. Mm. And I could draw a full circle into a guard. The best I did was when it, it all flowed right into each other yeah. and nothing needed to be jerky or stopping or anything. And every strike, there's a moment where the forces that you've generated start to resist to go through the body if you're tense. And you have to be tense to generate the power. Yeah. At that point, it's all about relaxing, allowing the staff or the sword to draw a full circle, and that circle then tran transfers into the guard with you barely having to do anything. Okay, that's nice. I like Redirecting it. Redirecting the flow. Redirecting the flow. So, the man's here with his oversimplistic theories. <laughs> this third one, so we've talked about ground yourself in triangles, was the first one that's about imparting mass. Um, throw out in circles, mm -hmm. about generating maximum velocity. Would you say the thing that ties it together is flow in equilibrio? Yes, I like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's quite a nice shape. For me, it's the it's the wiggly wiggly line in between the triangle and the circle. Mm -hmm. That's just the way my dumb mind uh, <laughs> envisions these things. Because ultimately, we could make a three-hour video, a four-hour video, talking about how to swing a stick. But to me, it's a, it's a picture. Is that just a mad theory or does it, does it make sense? <laughs> it does make sense. It does, it does I make think. Sense. When you're trying to get people to understand this, if you can get it, simple is best. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, folks. She thanks for the folks at Source of Swords. Also, thanks to Heiko from the Catherine Society for also, um, yeah, helping me out with some of this theory. And I'll catch you in another video.